Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths, and yet another uh, battleship fight, because uh, after the last, uh, I guess, fun vid, uh, vehicle uh, combat vid I did, that rhymed, um, it uh, was put to me that, well, a number of things. Firstly, that I didn't, uh, that it wasn't entirely a fair fight. It was the Stalslong Mark II versus the Cathar. And uh, the setup I had favored the Stalslong more than the Cathar, and like, etc, etc. And uh, also that um, uh, the Stalslong Mark II, which is uh, this ship right here, and the Iowa Inspiration, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, was made for a custom faction that I am designing, and that's a very long-term project, uh, because I'm very slow, and I only work on it when I feel like it. Um, these two have not fought each other before, so I will be posting a link to the last time the IO Inspiration uh, had her day in the limelight, where she utterly crushed uh, the Mark I style slung, and also crushed the prototype, uh, the unfinished version of the style slung Mark II. So now, I am interested in seeing uh, which one of these two uh, can beat the other now, because uh, the Star Song Mark II is finished now, and uh, she's a lot bigger and more expensive uh, than the IO Inspiration. So, how much is she? She is uh, 1.2 million materials, and the IO Inspiration is uh, just shy of 800,000 materials, and I'm not entirely sure uh, where the difference is made up, I believe the difference is missiles, because unless I'm remembering completely wrong, the Mark II uh, did not have missiles or torpedoes when she first went up against uh, the Iowa Inspiration. I think she's also had her APS uh, redone, and uh, she's got large interceptors here, and I think numerous things here, there, and everywhere. She's got a she's got a layer of heavy armor in the sides, just as extra bulge armor, so to speak. And yeah, I think the two will have quite a different outcome now. So the plan is, in the interest of fairness, there's going to be three rounds. And it's going to be best of three. And there's going to be uh, two... Uh, well, there's going to be three different configurations. Round one, they're going to start head to head. Round two, they're going to start with their left sides facing each other. And round three, they're going to start with their right. Or, at the very least, they're going to start with one broadside and the other. It doesn't matter too much, actually, because they both have ACB-controlled broadside. So, depending on what the enemy's bearing is, it'll switch to broadside left or broadside right. I usually disable that um, when I previously had the Stalsung uh, president of the campaign, because, like, you know, micromanaging your craft is kind of advisable uh, when you're playing campaign, because uh, their From the Depths AI is kind of dumb dumb and uh, will... Uh, mess things up otherwise. So, we're gonna hop over into the custom battle uh, setup, and I will see you there once I have that set up. Alrighty, so we've got that set up now. Standard fight setup. They start 1,500 meters apart. Nice, uh, I consider this a medium distance, so that's what we're gonna start with. Symmetric materials, 50,000 material per team. Uh, the rules are as follows. We're not using uh, these things in the middle right here. Uh, standard uh, despawning rules. And the time limit uh, is six is about ten minutes, so it doesn't we don't have to wait uh, forever for them to destroy each other. It's just very simple. One with the most health at the win uh, at the end wins. Um, unless actually, if the thing is completely incapable of fighting back, in which case uh, the other side wins. And here's the teams. We've got the Star Slime Mark II. Uh, big material advantage, as pointed out before, 1.2 million materials versus about 800,000. And the fleet colors actually aren't really relevant because, uh, you know, they're both, um, like, they're both not painted in fleet colors. So, let us start this fight. I am excited. I have not actually put these two against each other since, um, uh, actually not that long ago. It was just in January. It feels like a lot longer ago. But I guess we've all been busy, so let's just pause and unpause just to uh, get these two loaded in. So we've got the Star Slung over here, already moving guns into play. Um, interesting fact, they don't have uh, enough materials. So they are quite similar. Uh, the Inspiration Iowa was actually... I tested a lot of things on her in order to make the Star Slung Mark II, but 
Enough faffing around, let's go. So immediately, ah, oh darn it, I should have pointed out that I've just changed two things on the Inspiration Iowa. She has smoke now, uh, including the these uh, laser warners. And uh, her ammo compartments are a little different. I really should have shown this. Uh, they're separated out properly, so um, an ill-fated test against uh, Lightning Hoods Craft uh, made me realize that her ammo compartments are not a good idea. So now, they work just fine. Oh boy. So, lamb, making the lambs it makes a bit of a difference. Let's see here. And, uh, the Star Song has, um, quite a bit more powerful uh, torpedoes. Oh, yeah, the crams are actually going to hit now. Makes a bit of a difference. Also, the Star Song has repair bots now, and Inspiration Iowa doesn't, which is a little bit unfair. Just a little bit. Uh, but, uh, it, yeah, yeah, I just, I mean, I could stick some repair bots on the Inspiration Iowa. I want to see how she does, though. Um, both of them have very strong countermeasures, but in this particular case... Ooh, those missiles are not really gonna hit, are they? And both of them actually are, uh, have interceptors that are just sniping each other's stuff out of the way. Star Song's crams are actually hitting now, which makes a bit of a difference. Yep, there goes that laser turret. Um, makes a huge difference, actually, because previously, uh, they weren't hitting at all. What's happening there? No, it's not chain reacting. So let's just pause here, let's have a look. Yep, a new ammo compartment working exactly as intended, and not all going blue at once. But yeah, the, uh, the Star Slung is definitely winning. Definitely winning, although... Oh, okay. Sticking surge protectors in the laser turrets actually helped. Oh, looks like. Yep, uh, large interceptors have been knocked out. That's um, going to be a bit of an issue for the Star Slung. Like, uh, the Star Slung's in the lead, but not by much. Not by a huge amount. That's basically knocked out. Oh boy, that looks painful. Also, the fact that Star Slung uh, has torpedoes, that uh, makes a bit of a difference. Ooh, boy. Oh, these two are going there. Okay, the Star Slung's lead is increasing a little bit by little bit. And yet, the Star Slung now has um, a lot more stuff just to exhaust the lands um, of the Iowa Inspiration. Makes a bit of a difference. They are really far apart now. I've really got to... Uh, I've really got to get in the habit of, like, you know, putting turning props on my ships, because the, these two are so far apart they can barely aim at each other. Although the, the Star Song is saving her materials, because she's actually got um, range restrictions on her crams. And the Iowa Inspiration does not, and you can see why, because at this distance, like, good luck hitting with cram cannons. It's just even slow craft as they turn. They're just gonna evade almost all of them. Star Slime has basically all her weapons still. Just the odd bit of cram damage here and there. Though... I think... Yeah, I tweaked the Star Slime's broadside range just the other day. So... If she sails towards the Iowa in a straight line, uh, that is an opportunity for the Iowa to get some easy shots in. Assuming her shells don't get so shot down. She's not driving very quickly, I wonder... Yeah, I see this, like... Alrighty, so... I think that, uh, yeah, I think most of the Star Sun's torpedoes are not actually getting through. And who is burning through materials faster? They're both burning through materials quite quickly. What's happening over there? Yeah, she's not going very quickly. How fast is she going? Oh, she, yeah, she's only done 14 meters per second. The Star Sun's gonna catch her easily, especially if this happens. Uh, yep, she's just zapped off um, some of the uh, some of the Azipods, so... Yeah, and this is um, actually a tactic um, from 
ye olden days. Oh wow, those kinetic missiles do. They pack a punch. Alrighty. Oh darn it, I really want to see. Eh, let's see. The good hits over there, and the Iowa Inspirations missed. Now our craft on approach, they do dodge a lot of shells. Yeah, Iowa Inspiration is probably not going to win this one. She's holding up pretty well though. Uh, when considering that she's uh, fighting a ship that uh, is quite a bit bigger and meaner than she is. Also, those shells just are still hitting. They're still landing. It's just a combination of all the Star Slung's active defenses uh, making a bit of a difference. Oh, uh, inspiration. Big hit. Big hit. What's happening over there? Yeah, it's getting right in there. It's getting deep. Oh, that looks good, though. That looks good. Yeah, that's uh, what that extra bulge armor does. But yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's this? Nope. Superficial damage is a structural damage. Whoop. And that's good night to that turret. Oh, jeez. That was a that was a good shot. And now they're finally getting back into proper broadside range. Yep. And yep, yep, yep. Star Slung is doing a lot better now, which is good because. Um, Star Slung's the more recent vehicle. I would hate for it to. Uh, I would hate for my older vehicle to like be better than my newer one. That's the opposite of what we want. We want progress. Star Slung has taken a few hits to the guns. Now it looks like uh, she'll be able to shoot the Iowa straight up the middle. Have I really been calling the Inspiration Iowa the Iowa Inspiration this whole time? I think I have. Whoops. How's the style sign going? How fast are you going, my girl? You are going about the same as you usually do. Yeah, she's had some cram damage. Definitely had some. Whoa, okay. Whoa, superstructure just dis disintegrated. I think torpedoes might have been a, a big factor at play here. What just happened? Lots of stuff. I think some uh, torpedo interceptors just decided to go flying. Wow. These secondaries, I think, got just wiped completely early on. It is neat to see how these two maneuver around each other. They're just adapting, depending on uh, where they come from. I should mention as well that the Iowa Inspiration um, has more restrictions on her. She's uh, not allowed uh, HE stuff. And, um, yeah, so uh, no heat... No Hesh, no HE, no Flak. So it makes a bit of a difference. It means there's some pretty potent weaponry that she's straight up not allowed to use. So yeah, that does make a difference. That does make a difference. Now the question is, uh, can the Star Song actually destroy her before time runs out? There's very thick armor on the Iowa. It's not easy to get through. Not easy to get through at all. There's a lot of bouncy stuff here. Lots of interceptors. What damage has the Star Slung taken? Let's go have a look at that, just quickly. Mostly superficial damage, by the looks of it. Mostly, yeah, on the other side. And it's mostly been repaired, actually. Yeah, this, uh, this turret took a few hits to the face, that's for sure. Okay, then. Yeah, I shouldn't have looked away. The Inspiration Iowa is... Oh, what's happened? Oh, she's, uh, she's not sinking. Oh, she is sinking. She's too damaged. Yep, that's it. Okay, wow. Handily beat. Handily beat. Well, uh, that's the end of round one. And uh, they start head-to-head. -head. They certainly, uh, 
Wow, the Stall Song is definitely going to have revenge. If we have time, I don't know if we're going to have time. Uh, I do want to see how the Iowa Inspiration does against the Cathar. Um, because the Cathar is the, I guess, um, not a battleship doom monitor kind of thing. Um, or maybe that could be another video. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We maybe one bonus round. Bonus round will be fun. But yeah, like, uh, the Iron Civilization will definitely have a huge advantage there, because, um, the Cathar uh, doesn't have any laser defense. So, bit of an issue. Alrighty. And exactly... Yep, that's the last ammo come up. Alright, 7 minutes and 19 seconds. Uh, let's have another go. But this time we're going to tweak the angles that these two start with. So, and, um, so let's go 90 degrees. And 90 degrees. And let's go. Let's go. I'm having a good time. Whee! Whoopsie daisy. Wah! Where are we? Oh, all the way over there. Alright, so now they're both facing 90 degrees to each other, so they've got broadside left going on. Wait, is it broadside left? Yes, it is. So now let's see how they do. Now that uh, the first cram volleys are now far more likely to uh, land. Let's see what happens here. This could be... Oh, bad luck. Right in the drink. Um, what happened over here, though? I think I think those connected. Or at least some of them did. What happened here? Let's just see here. Um, kind of? Definitely the Star Slung uh, did better on that first volley. Yep, and the kinetic missiles are just uh, draining the land system. But yep, this uh, middle gun here already got problems. Wow, this, the Star Song is actually doing even better this round. Let's see if these uh, let's see if these crams get through. Oh, uh, I think the Star Song is actually faster than the Iowans. Uh oh, that's bad. Nope, they missed. That is why I build my ships nice and flat, so things either undershoot or overshoot. Yeah, well, the Star Song's really not playing around anymore. Um, pretty sure third round would go roughly the same as uh, as round two right here. Also, I remember I actually rewatched um, the uh, last video I did with the IO Inspiration. I was talking about missile interceptors. It um, it depends on what's being shot at you, what size of missile interceptor you want. You might very well want small, medium, large, or um, even huge, really. It's still possible to get that. Definitely makes a difference uh, when... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that doom frag still, still does its job, that's for sure. Oh, Star Slung actually managed to get hit a bit. And to get hit a bit, what lost? What got lost here? Uh, not a lot. By the looks of it, uh, that block confetti suggests um, not a lot. Okay, what is that gonna do? That's a miss. Uh, that wasn't. I probably should have looked over there. Yeah, the Star Song hates these two turrets right here. It's uh, definitely got a grudge against those two. Perhaps she remembers from uh, from before she was truly born uh, what it was like. Did one of these ships turn around? Am I crazy? But no, 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 they didn't. They're both still broadside left. Yep, these Grams are gonna come in and ruin the day. Wow. Just consistently going for that, for that spot. Mm. My goodness. Alrighty. Yeah, it's like, um... 
Big difference, uh, the finished product is. I really do like both of these ships. Like, it's actually kind of amazing to me that I've managed to build, like, at least three, four uh, different battleships now. Um, and each of them mostly quite visually distinct as well. Uh, yeah, that's, um, no small thing. I remember a time when I seriously thought I wouldn't be able to do that. And if I can do it, so can you- Oh, blimey, this turret just straight up fell off. That thump damage though. And this is why you actually want to spread out detection all over the place. Uh, like um, on the turrets, for instance. Though I think, yeah, she can't fight back. She, she's done. She's done. She's target cracking. Well, no, she is still firing, but um, if I had to guess... Oh, wow, that actually got through. Well, yeah, the Star Song's barely scratched. I think repair bots do are making a huge different he difference here. My goodness. Did I even stick rudders on the Highway's version? I did not. That changes everything. Whoa, that's a lot of smoke. Yeah, fun fact about the, uh, like, I posted, uh, I think on Twitter and in the YouTube community page, um, what kind of tournament people would like to see, and overwhelmingly, people wanted to see, like, World War II-style vessels, so just APS and crams, just, um, having a go at each other, and I thought, like, okay, cool. Uh, a little bit predictable, and of course, uh, the other tournament ideas I am probably gonna do... Uh, as well, eventually, but, uh, yeah. Like, it looks like World War II vehicles, World War II style vehicles, I should say. I'm not fussed. It doesn't have to be exact replicas. But yeah, I'm working on the rule set for that. Lots of smoke, lots of crams. And when two cram ships just go head to head, it is so satisfying to watch. Because it's like it's that extra bit of anticipation, like are the shells gonna hit or are they? Oh wow, the Star Song's now chasing Chasing the Iowa. She's saying, you get back here. You get back here and play. I actually have worked on the Star Sun Mark II quite a bit more than the Iowa, I do have to say. I do have to say. She's still fighting back though. Still very much fighting back. Maybe round three the Iowa inspiration can get lucky. And it's certainly not being lucky now, there goes that turret. I'm trying to remember, do these... Turrets have necks? So they do have necks. Interesting. Yeah, that's actually one advantage the Star Slug has is because her turrets are shorter, so they're harder to hit, but they actually have more ducca in them because they're neckless. I've had people try and tell me that uh, necklace turrets are bad, and they're not bad. It's just um, they have different pros and cons when compared to turrets with necks. Uh, the biggest one being that neck, uh, if you put a neck on your turrets, uh, is this thing just born again? No, it isn't. Uh, if you put necks on your turrets, you can make the turret cap smaller, and that is an advantage. Uh, but with neckless turrets, you can make the whole thing just a little bit shorter, and it means your entire craft uh, can be shorter as a direct result. Yep, there she goes. Um, huge disadvantage for a ship to require uh, propellers to stay afloat. Um, that's why I believe uh, Mark II over here it doesn't actually require that. Unless I'm misremembering. She's got a lot of alloy in her. Yep, nope, she's got... What has she got? She's got... Uh, she doesn't even have pitch control. Wow. I actually kind of knew what I was doing when I was uh, making uh, the Mark II. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. 
Yeah, Iowa Inspiration once again going down. I really would rather avoid having to remake um, every custom faction craft I've made so far. Uh, it's also like I could start making them on stream, but I tend to find that um, I build a lot faster and a lot better when I'm not multitasking between, you know, building something, talking, um, giving running commentary, and also, you know, trying to be entertaining for the stream. So yeah, and that was about five minutes, so round three, because I just love watching this. And uh, I swear I'm not trying to just advertise the Star Slime Mark II, which is on the workshop, by the way. Wow, that didn't help my case. Um, it's just that I'm, like, she's, she's me battleship, and I'm proud of her. Like, whenever people make battleships that they're proud of and from the depths, they're proud of them. Because it's a battleship. So round, round three, and I am guess we're gonna have to uh, bring out the Cathar as the bonus round. Because this UFC is uh, being shorter than expected. Why do I keep talking about UFC? Alright, so there they are. Now they're broadside right. It shouldn't make too much of a difference, although it really does depend whether the Iowa can pull some lucky shots. If she uh, consistently lands cram shells here on the APS, I think that'll make a big difference. Let's just follow the style sign a little bit. See, yep, and the smoke is very good. Smoke is a good thing. The Star Song also has way more missiles uh, than the Iowa. That makes a difference. And yep, it looks like... Uh, oh, that's a huge advantage! That's a huge advantage that the, the Star Song moves to close. Uh, whereas the Iowa does not, because the Star Song has a shorter broadside. Uh, minimum distance. Or maximum distance, rather. I didn't think of that. Wow. Sometimes, yeah, just a little bit of AI behavior can make a huge difference. The Star Slung just wants to close in. And I will, ooh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, that looks like good shots. Nope. Wait, let's see here. Let's see here. Are these good shots over here? Not really. Oh, yes, really. It also makes a massive difference that the maximum speed of the Iowa... Oh, yeah, she's a lot slower than the Star Slung, so... The Star Slung dodges shells much more consistently. Yeah, huge advantage. This w this was a considerably less fair fight than I thought. I kind of oh wait no she's taking some damage because like yeah the Star Slung Mark II. Yeah, she's got a whole list of advantages. I guess it does make sense though. Like I said, the Star Slung Mark II, a lot of their better features I actually was testing on the Iowa Inspiration. And then, it combined with um, some other um, things I managed to science, uh, just in the construction of her being built. Oh, just doing her construction progress, I mean, process. Oh, yep, that's why. Low slung, star slung. She's not very tall. She's, oh, she's only like 31 meters tall, and that's like from the very bottom of her uh, to the superstructure. I tend to still make a low-slung craft, as a general rule. Following the crams in... Are these gonna be good hits? Oh, yes. What did that do? That took out the lambs. Yeah, poor Iowa inspiration. Hopefully she'll get her revenge against the Cathar. But I don't think she'll do... I don't think the Cathar will do super well against her. Or maybe not. I think the Cathar's torpedoes, though. I think that they are ridiculous. I think maybe the cat. Also, the Cathar is also really expensive. It's like ridiculous amounts of missiles and torps. Also, the Cathar was made really recently. Um, do you have to admit the armor on the Iowa is pretty darn good? It's very thick. It's like... What is it? It's like... One, two, three, four, five... Yeah, it's five layers... No. Is it? Yeah, it's five layers of metal, an air gap, and then heavy armor. It's, uh, it's, uh, more than a little bit. Wow, the, the Star Slung is actually dodging shells like, like, wow. Damn. Wow, front just got vaporized. 
Oh no, that was the back. My bad. My bad. She's moving even slower now. A lot of her propulsion's been taken out. And in come the kinetic missiles. And they just vaporize the superstructure. And once again, uh, now that the uh, IO Inspiration's um, propulsion is damaged, so is her steering, so she can't maneuver. And so the Star Slime's just gonna flank her and drop some bombs on her. Ouch! Yeah, it's right in there, getting right in the lambs, getting right in the laser system. Yeah, Star Slime's really not even breaking a sweat. Damn. Also, these large interceptors are like consistently. Yeah. Wow. Let's see what happens to this lone missile right here. It's gonna get deleted. Large interceptors, man, they make a big difference. Poor Iowa inspiration. She was meant to be. She was meant to. Well. Yeah. I guess she's not the final boss craft of the faction she's for then. It'd have to be a different one. She is big though. She's probably. Alright, oh, she's a lot smaller than she used to be because the Star Slung shot her a bunch. Yeah, I think I'll have to make a. I don't know, a Yamato inspired uh, thing. Maybe, maybe that can fly. Who knows? I should stick extra rudders on this thing. Like, this extra propulsion over here. But, uh, propulsion steering, I should say. But, yeah. I think all my ships in general need to maneuver a little bit better. Or I could just not make them so long and thin. Because that really screws with the ship's ability to turn. These crams gonna hit. Why is the Star Song at her most accurate when shooting at things that I've built? It's amazing that uh, these turrets are still alive, though. I have gotten so much better at designing turrets um, over the 3,000 or so hours uh, that I've been playing from the depths. Huge difference that science and bitter experience makes knowing how to doom crack. See how well this uh, this armor is holding up though. This is essentially three layers of heavy armor. So any shots coming through here, yeah, they're not getting in as far. Although, this is actually a classic thing. Um, as to why... Oh, this thing's sinking, isn't it? Yeah. As to why, um, if you're going to use heavy armor, you should do a full wrap of it, because... Um, this heavy armor isn't actually doing a super good job against these crams because they're coming over it and they're hitting just above it. And since uh, some of those crams are, have 180 degrees on the fragments, they're just sipping right through here and they're totally wrecking the engines uh, and uh, everything else in there. So yeah, the style slung, 3 out of 3, a definite winner. Definite winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, somebody fetch me Nando's. And if you don't know what Nando's is, you're missing out. I'm... Oh, wow. Now I'm craving Nando's. Oh, no. Watching battleships fight has made me hungry. Well, then. Uh, that was a lot faster than uh, I thought it would be. I actually did think the IO Inspiration would have a better shot at this. But I guess I... If anything, I think I just uh, underestimated just how fast the Star Slug is. She's, she is a speedy gal. She has a lot of azipods on her. Like, um, 34 meters per second is, um, it's not in tremendously fast, but something this big, that's a surface displacement vessel, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty quick. And combined with the low profile, uh, and, uh, the large interceptors and the lambs, it's just the crams on the Iowa Inspiration, which are her main weapon, they weren't able to do really anything. And, um, just, um... These large decoys right here just shut down the IO Inspiration's missiles. And no torpedoes. The torpedoes also made quite a big difference. Alright, so now let us uh, go back here. And this time we are going to um, get rid of you. And we're going to... Uh, just, a, just a few bonus rounds. Like, again, same thing. Uh, but we're going to have the Cathar. Um... Uh, go up against the Inspiration Iowa. 
Also, Hardy Har, Onyx Watch Colors, um, just for giggles. And so same rules, exactly the same rules otherwise. Starting head to head, and let's see how we go. I don't know which one. Oh yeah, the Cathar is really expensive thanks to the huge torpedoes on her. Question is, is whether those huge torpedoes uh, will be able to uh, get the job done. So where are you? They're behind us. So for those of you who have not seen the Cathar before, a big knockoff uh, white flayer inspired craft. A giant. Oh wow. So that's what she looks like in Onyx Watch Colors. A giant. Um, a super cavitation uh, AP frag gun right here. It's really huge. Uh, could be armored a bit better. Uh, four particle cannons. Huge array of uh, kinetic EMP missiles. And huge torpedoes in the front. Uh, big decoys. And big flares there. And what else? What else? Oh yeah, interesting azipod design. Um, I'm actually kind of pleased with this arrangement back here. I think it looks pretty cool. Looks exotic. Looks weird. But you can see that, like, this is a canoe built around just that giant ass uh, cannon, which hopefully doesn't get destroyed immediately. It didn't get destroyed immediately. Mere miss. Now it's looking a little bit even. I want to see what these, uh, what these torps do, though. The, uh,. There's not much the Iowa Inspiration could do against the APS, though, because um, this uh, APS cannon, uh, it's a super, it's, like I said, it's super cavitation. I forget how big it is. Uh, but yeah, it is designed to aim below the waterline and just um, pop wide open components like this. And as you can see, it, it does penetrate quite deep. And now the crams are going to come in and make a bit of a mess. Oh my goodness. Iowa Inspiration is taking heavy damage. What's going on there? And yeah, no no laser defense on the Cathar. That does make a difference. Also, ah, damn it. I missed the huge torpedoes and what they did. Let's guess where they hit. Oh, here's a massive hole. I'm guessing that's where, <laughs> that's where one of them went. Where's another massive hole? Uh, well, probably here. Probably here. Okay then, yeah. Yeah, that's probably where one of them went. It's not looking good, super good for the Iowa Inspiration. Not unless there's a real Hail Mary lucky shot. Wow. The Cathar is actually shrugging off. Um, because this is, this, uh... Just under the rim of this turret cap is where she's kind of most vulnerable. Because um, if this gets uh, ruptured, it gets uh, blown up completely. So, yeah, that's the that's the Iowa's main main bet, so to speak. Also, I think the Iowa is is sinking uh, because uh, the Cathar is a real devil for um, uh, rupturing compartments. Come on, Iowa, I believe in ya. Let's see if this uh, APS going to work. It's a vicious gun, I do have to say. Like, um, anything that cannot reliably uh, knock out uh, the the main gun of the Cathar uh, tends to uh, suffer greatly, especially if it hides underwater. And now that the Cathar's got the distance, uh, looks like she's gonna make a bit of a difference and not quite enough torpedo defense to stop these torpedoes from completely ruining her life. The Cathar is taking damage bit by bit. Yes, yeah, so Iowa is sinking quite a bit. Quite a bit and uh, I think that torpedo is still gonna make a bit of a mess. Oh, it's coming in at the wrong angle for this. Yet, yeah, uh, didn't do much damage. Didn't do a huge amount of damage, not for what it costs. See, now, um, the Cathar's got an advantage in that it's got much better long-range weaponry. 
yeah, that laser is uh, set to switch targets every second. Which does mean that uh, the Iowa could blind the Cathar, actually. But, um... Might not work still, though. Yeah, this is, uh... This fight could go the distance. What's happening over there? Oh, yeah. Listen, Kev, I think all three cram turrets have been compromised. Yeah, there's big chunks ripped out of every single one of them. Especially, yep, look in here. Uh, that's what that gun does. It just pokes holes through basically every vital system that a ship has. Oh boy. Oh lordy do. Yeah, it's actually managed to take out um, one of the huge torpedoes. If the yeah, the Cathar has got a grudge against uh, this turret back here. Definite grudge. And I don't think it's gonna go much better in the next few rounds uh, for the Iowa. I was actually expecting, like, once I'm not making this up, I swear I'm expecting the Iowa to do better than what she's currently doing. I guess I keep underestimating my new stuff and um, overestimating uh, my old stuff. Oh, hello, this uh, thing is fast and is coming in hot. What did that do? Oh, that blew a hole. Wow, lucky for the Iowa, this is mostly empty space here. Such is the risk of penetrators. Um, they might just hit a spot that's not worth penetrating. Okay then. Where is that gun? What is that gun doing? Still taking a little bit of time for that APS to chew through uh, the Iowa's armor. But this is a classic case uh, in From the Depths, is that if you have to choose between spending materials on armor or weaponry, uh, you should pick weaponry every time. Because uh, one of the best defenses possible is just shoot the other thing dead before it has the chance to damage you. Which is actually why one of the reasons why crams are not very good weapons is because they're slow. Uh, in the time it takes for a cram volley to get fired, arc through the air and land, um, an APS or laser or particle cannon uh, can already do significant damage. So, uh, one of their major weaknesses. This is, wow, it is, it is chewing through armor. This repeated. Okay, hello, there's a torpedo. Hello, hello, and there goes an engine, and yeah, the Iowa Inspiration. Yeah, she's having a bad day. She's having a really sucky day, actually. Though I am glad that this last minute change to the ammo compartment uh, made quite a difference. Made quite a difference indeed. Yeah, Cathar's got the range now. Uh, no, I said that before. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Uh, torpedo Inceptor's being stupid. Yep, and there's another turret. Well, this turret's already dead. What happened to you? And you can see the contrast here, just the styles of damage between the Stahl Song and the Cathar. The Stahl Song tends to destroy things from the top down. Because of how crams arc and how the kinetic missiles are. Wow, okay, this turret is still firing. And the Cathar, uh, because uh, it prioritizes aiming at things uh, that are below the water, it destroys things from the bottom up. So it's still. It's not knocking out weapons, but it is weakening them. It's just poking holes through them. And against anything with volatile APS on it, the Cathar is terrifying because it just. It ignores the turret gaps and just just persistently pokes holes uh, in the armor below the water until it hits something uh, volatile. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a great demonstration of uh, what super cavitation APS is like. Just, like, you know, dodging the lambs completely. That is actually a good way to take on uh, the Megalodon, by the way. It's something that I've been testing. Yes, the most wanted for that. Is coming eventually. 
I need to make something that can go 1v1 with a mech. First. Ah, so much to do. You sinking yet? Yep, uh, there you go. Sorry to say. But yeah, so uh, one thing that definitely works reliably against the Meg is just Super Cavitation APS, particularly Pen Depth, because then you can uh, just snipe at it below the waterline and ruin its life. Admittedly, it has very thick armor below the waterline, uh, but that's why I use giant railguns. You punch massive holes in it. Once again, yeah, Iowa's not doing so hot. Iowa is not doing so hot on the whole not getting destroyed thing. Key key component to winning battles is uh, don't get destroyed. If you get destroyed, uh, you kind of can't win, unless you're um, that uh, unless you're in that story of the two ancient Greek wrestlers who were so evenly matched they ended up just taking turns striking at each other, uh, just one blow at a time, and uh, one of them. Uh, stabbed under the other guy's ribs and then pulled his guts out and uh, he was disqualified because he did two moves so the dead guy won. That's like the one uh, thing, account I know of in which uh, the dead guy won the fight. Because the other guy cheated. And let that be a lesson to you. Uh, cheaters never prosper except when they do all the time. Alright, so let's try a different starting angle here. Uh, this might end up being a longer video than I thought it would be. Alright, so Cathar, let's do 90 degrees. I believe the Cathar does not have uh, just a broadside, so it just has... Uh, just sticks to broadside, right? So she's gonna have to turn around. So this might be the round where the Iowa can literally turn things around. So let's just double check that. Yeah. Because if the Cathar needs to turn around, she's gonna be getting closer to the Iowa, and that means... Uh, crams are gonna be a problem for her. Yeah, she's uh, she's not facing her preferred direction, uh, but the Iowa is. So let's see if this first cram volley can get the job done. First, let's see what's already happened here. Okay, they've missed. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, that first cram volley missed completely. Bravo, Iowa. Interesting, though. Oh, she's turning the other way. Clever girl. Clever girl. She's not getting closer. She's getting further away. And that gentle turn right there. Are those cram cannons going to land at the right space to cripple that? Oh, nope. They did a lot of damage. Or not much damage. The Cathar is pretty... has got pretty good armor of her own. But yeah, also very good... Uh-oh, hello. Hello. Here's a large missile. That did basically nothing. Uh, the Inspiration Iowa, though. Yeah, she's not doing so hot. Wow, the Cathar's gonna... It's gonna wreck shop even more. Again, a low-slung, fast vehicle... How fast is the Cathar? Top speed is 35 meters per second. This is, um... At this distance, yeah, the Iowa isn't gonna be able to hit her. Like, at all. And I wonder what happened there. There's sudden loss of life over here. And by life, I mean blocks. That, yeah, I think that was a large torpedo that happened in there. Yeah, man. I was, um... The always missile interceptors are doing a decent job at stopping the missiles from bringing... Ooh, hello. Oh, dearie me. Wow, that, again, huge torpedo, uh, ripped a hole straight through there. It looks like, uh, it looks like, once again, the Cathar is going to take this. I don't think we're going to do a round three, because I think we I think we know how that's going to end up. Well, I might have to do some uh, more work on the Iowa Inspiration. 
or even rebuild her. Nah. Nah, I like her how she is. She's not meant to be an absolutely unstoppable force. Uh, she's meant to be a reasonably scary faction vehicle and oh dear, what happened there? Oh, that was again huge torpedo. Huge torpedo right in the uh, right in the lambs by the looks of it. Well, no, right in the engines, even worse. Now the Iowa's sinking again. And now she's driving uh, towards Cathar in a straight line. And let's see if these crams are going to get anywhere. My guess is no. Actually, if I stuck missile interceptors on the Cathar, she'd be even more scary. She would be terrifying. She would zap crams completely out of the air. And this is the kind of thing where... I used to think that signal processors were overpowered. Uh, but, um... kind of need them, really, because these are... Once you get strong enough decoys, um... Re really, this is what missile fights turn into. It's just... Strong decoys just repeatedly pull them, just, um, into space. Admittedly, sometimes this happens. And, uh, they come back down from space. And looks like the Iowa just got blinded. Blinded by the light. Yeah, she's very sync now. She is very sync. She is kitchen sink. Yeah, I do think that this armor design is a success, though. Just this middle belt armor. Uh, anything coming below at the waterline mostly has trouble dealing with it, unless they're, well, this, for instance. Actually, no, that did stop most of it. And, yeah, it did, it did, it did stop it. It did manage. Important. Damn. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna say, five minutes, and uh, yeah, that'll be it really, won't it? That'll be good goodbye, that's all she wrote. Who is she anyway, and why is she writing goodbye? Let's have a look at the Cathar. She's, she's lost a little bit of health, so what happened to her? Where'd she lose health? Um... Uh, Mostly scratched paint. Oh, she got hit in the face. And uh, to those of you who say that um, necklace turrets suck, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know what did this. It might have been missiles. It might have been the crams. But yeah, this uh, this turret cap is very strong. Um, hitting it in the face uh, generally doesn't work very well. You have to you have to hit it at the perfect angle and broadside is not the perfect angle. Yeah. Yeah, poor Iowa, jeez. Jeez. She's having a bad day. So you've had a bad day. Got hit by huge torpedoes right there. And also right here. Ouch. Yeah, I knew the torpedoes were gonna make a bit of a difference. Bit of a huge difference. I actually wonder what the Cathar would be vulnerable to. Probably a really fast flyer that uh, doesn't have any bits in the water. <laughs> now I'm just craving Nando's. Lunch was a long time ago, or so it feels like. Mm. Oh no, these two are going almost exactly the same spot. Look, and just took out a, a fair amount of the deck, including the floaty stuff keeping this thing afloat. What? Oh! Oh, how did I? Oh, uh, whoops, my mistake. I thought it just took out the deck. It took out a turret. <laughs> it ripped a turret clean off. Man, we get to play with a lot of big firepower. Yep, and there we go again. 
There we go again. Uh, Cathar is sitting pretty at 96.8% health. And the Iowa dead. At roughly 5 minutes. So yeah. Uh, one more round. Why not? I know the video is going to go a little bit long as a direct result. But you know what? I want to see on 3. You never know. You never know. I don't know. Do you know? No, you don't know. You know how I know you don't know? Because I don't know. And therefore, you don't know. You don't know. Uh, okay then, let's go again. Oh boy. Man. Alright, now, if I remember correctly, this is the favored broadside angle for the Cathar. So let's see. Uh, if that wee turn she does, that laser is not very strong, actually. If that laser actually, a little bit of wow, the cathar also accelerates amazingly. So, yeah, no timed fuses on the on the Iowa. That makes a difference. Definitely makes a difference. Laser's not doing as much as I thought it would. Yeah, even without laser defense, just the Cathar's sheer block count. Like, how many blocks is she? She's 20, 21,000 blocks. She's a bit smaller than the Iowa Inspiration. Oh, hello. Hello. Are these going to do anything? Nope. Missed completely. Severely threatened uh, this patch of ocean down there. Once again, um, Cathar demonstrating... I should mention as well that Cathar also has repair bots. Maybe that's the main reason uh, the Iowa is getting uh, a Tyrannosaurus wrecked a bit. Also thick armor. Although that did... Yeah, those two, they've breached it. They have definitely breached it. They're threatening... Oh, wow, they even clipped a bit off this particle cannon. But uh, not enough. Not quite enough. Oh, and the little secondaries are going. Yeah, now the Cathar is just sitting pretty out at range. Oh, yeah, Inspiration I was already down 7% health. It's not looking good. Let's follow these torpedoes to their destiny. Their destiny is to die and also take a beautiful ship down with them. And that makes me sad. It doesn't really, but also... Oh, the other thing uh, that the Cathar is... Uh really good at is that uh, she... where is it? Let's just follow... here... Yeah, uh, she's dropping huge um, decoys. So the uh, uh, torpedo interceptors over on uh, the Iowa Inspiration, they're prioritizing that massive uh, sonar transmitter rather than the huge torpedoes uh, which are coming straight at her. Handy trick if your torpedoes kept getting, keep getting intercepted. And it's why, if you're serious about the torpedo defense, uh, you have both um, things that shoot torpedoes and things that distract them. Yeah, constant uh, array of block confetti right there. Ooh boy. Ooh boy. Yeah, once again. Ooh dear. Oh yeah, that... Uh that turret, oh, yeah, that must have been a previous large torpedo, and looks like, yeah, she's gonna just uh, quickly uh, vaporize that bit. The, where did, one torpedo got destroyed, how about that? Hmm, interesting. I think the Iowa needs to be faster. Yeah, that's probably it. She needs to be way faster. Like, I mean a lot faster. And more rudders, more turning. And she just got blinded. Blinded by the light again. The blue light of EMP. Wow, the Cathar's really not... She's barely taking a scratch. Less than 1% health. Damn. Yeah, maybe I do need to redo the IO Inspiration. Just need to get in the hang. Okay, yeah. Ouch. 
It is a very good change, though, that um, when missiles are damaged, they do less damage. Because otherwise, well, yeah, huge missiles, huge torpedoes like this would be so much worse. Hey, that armor scheme is uh, its helping. It's definitely helping. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Not much more to say except yep, 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 yep. Yeah, wow. I remember the apps of, like, how just brutally dominating the Iowa Inspiration was when I tested her against uh, the Escaradol. Um, another custom faction battleship I've made. And, uh, and against the Star Slung, the Mark 1 Star Slung, and against the prototyped Mark 2. She seemed unstoppable. It's just, I guess I've gotten better at building because, ye gods, uh, she is very stoppable right now. She's wrong stoppable. How many of you are old enough to get the reference I just made? I didn't even watch Kim Possible. Is that actually his name? Ron Stoppable? Probably. I don't remember. Freckled Kid. Yep, and there goes uh, there goes that turret again. Shout out again to the Bevel who actually decorated this thing and made it look pretty. Might need to might need them to get to decorate the new one. I think the new one's actually going to be smaller and faster and have blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the smaller and the faster. Just blackjack and hookers. I think, yeah, these are combination EMP and kinetics. They're strong. They're, they are strong. They are strong for Mother Russia. Also, I'm just remembering the advice someone gave me to, um, well, angle the fragmentation on those torps up just a little bit. I kind of do, but also kind of don't want to do that. Damn. That moment when you realize that, uh... That, uh, you've gotten good at, uh, wrecking armor. Or your armor's inadequate. Incidentally, no, none of the craft you've seen uh, here in this video can uh, solo the Megalodon. Uh, not really possible. At the moment. I'm working on it. Can't really solo the Megalodon with um, uh, anything that has crams on it. Because the Meg is about as cram proof as it gets. And it uh, looks like that is it. That's all she wrote. So, everybody, F in chat or comments. For the Iowa inspiration, she fought valiantly six times in a row, was soundly beaten six times in a row, by the Star Slung Mark II and the Cathar. Like, I wasn't actually expecting to um, drag the Cathar out uh, for this one, but uh, yeah, it's like, wow, the Star Slung Mark II just, you know, wrecked shop. So I think, yeah, I'm either gonna do some retrofitting of the inspiration Iowa, or I'm going to... Um, we're gonna rebuild her from scratch. Like, you know, and possibly uh, take more notes off the real-life uh, Iowa-class battleship. Now that I know how. I don't know how, actually. I'll just have to figure that out. But anyway, that was the... That's the fun vid. Just once again, lots of battleships shooting each other. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. And hopefully we can, uh, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what kind of, leave suggestions for fun videos in the, in the comments below, and I will get on that thing. Because unlike most lists I have, the fun video thing is considerably shorter than the other lists. Farewell!